Hi Ben here, welcome back to the workshop for another Work in Progress Wednesday. And I've just had this week arrive in the post, I sent off a design to the, a manufacturer that makes steel stamps. So I've been using this same manufacturer for about 20 years. The company's called Davidson Steel Stamp Supplies up in Sheffield. They're a bit old school, they haven't got a website. Uh, you basically just have to Google Davidson's and you'll find a, a yellow pages uh, Google search and that'll have their telephone number and their address on there. But basically you send off whatever you want to be made into a stamp. In this instance, I just wanted a steel type. I hadn't got a steel stamp for my AEBL steel. So I sent off the text and told him what size I wanted to make it. And Chris up at Davidson's made me these stamps. He made me one as a hand stamp that I can use with a hammer. And then he's made me one that I can put in my hydraulic press. Now what I do to save a little bit, bit of time now is Chris makes the stamps for me and he makes them out of O1 tool steel and because there's sometimes a bit of a delay if he gets the heat treat done himself he sends them down to me in a totally annealed form so totally soft and then obviously I can heat treat them in house here. O1 tool steels are fairly common steel that I use for some of the knives and the carving tools so I'm quite familiar with heat treating it. So I've just run these through a heat treat cycle and I want to test these to make sure that they're exactly how I want them to be. Obviously being a hand stamp, if they're too hard, when I strike them with the hammer they could actually break. And obviously if, the, if it isn't hard enough then obviously those little letters are just going to deform when I hammer them into the steel. So I thought it would be a good idea to show you what I use in the workshop to make sure that when I heat treat steel, even though I might be following a recipe, like a heat treat data for the particular steel, it's good to be able to actually test those temperatures and make sure you're getting the results you need. So what we use in the workshop is these sort of scientific devices. They're called Rockwell testers. There's different testers out there, um, but this is particularly designed for testing the hardness of st steel. So it's the Rockwell C scale that we use for actually testing steel. And what it uses, I've got two, and I'll explain why I've got two. I had an old original Indentex machine that actually broke on me. It was a bit unreliable. So the people that used to calibrate my machine refurbish uh, Rockwell testers. So I got this really amazing old Avery machine. Obviously in Britain, Avery is well known for set, uh, any kind of weight and measures type of machinery. So the sets of scales, things like that. So this was a really old one that they'd refurbished really nice piece of equipment quite expensive if you buy in a sort of reconditioned one like this you're looking at about a thousand pounds and then just so that i don't have the, any kind of complication if this goes wrong a retiring knife maker was selling his rockwell tester this is a bit of a cheaper model this was about 800 pounds new um, so i've got two in the workshop just in case one goes awry and it's also quite nice because sometimes you might think you're getting sort of wrong results you can sort of jump between the two and make sure that you're getting a good average on the actual hardness. So how they actually work, they've got what we call an indenter. So this is made from an industrial diamond and that's calibrated and it's going to basically stick into the steel and penetrate a certain depth into the steel. Now what it does, and if I line this up you'll start to see it, you put whatever you're going to test underneath that uh, diamond indenter and then you normally wind it up so that the indenter starts to stick into the steel. Now be careful because obviously it's a diamond, you don't want to damage it. So once I've got the diamond to sort of bite in the steel, I keep winding this, this sort of uh, shaft that it's sitting on. They call it an anvil. So you're winding that anvil up and I keep winding until this tiny little uh, needle on the dial goes to the red and keep winding until it gets up to the C or the zero and I normally just zero it so that it's absolutely bang on that C and at that stage what you've done is you've put what they call a preload on there so you'll put in a calibrated 10 kilogram amount of load onto that diamond and then what we do is we with this particular model we've got a little lever that we release the dial will spin this handle will move and now what it's doing is it's putting a, an extra load on there. So it's now putting a 30 kilogram load onto that diamond indenter. Let it settle, let the needle sit, If obviously if it's still moving or the handle is still moving. Wait until it's totally stopped 
and then we can release that load. So I push that lever away from me and then that gives us our reading. And basically what it's doing is it's measuring the difference in depth that that diamond has penetrated the steel between the 10 kilo preload and the 30 kilo load that you put on afterwards. And that basically measures the difference and gives us our Rockwell C reading. So that's reading just slightly under 58. So that's like 57.5, something like that. So normally what I'd do is I'd take a few readings. So carefully unwind it, move it to a next position. Make sure you're not testing the same place every time. Make sure you're not putting it in the same divot that that diamond makes. And then we'll do another test. I normally do two or three tests and you can sort of take an average between the two. So carefully wind that up again, up to the C. Release the load, let the needle settle. Carefully push it back. So it's pretty much bob on 58, that's reading, 58 Rockwell C. So what I'll do, that's the hand stamp. What I'll also do is just test the one that's gonna go on the fly press. So this is a little bit thicker, so I have to wind this anvil down a little bit. Make sure I'm not gonna put it in too close to the actual lettering. And wind that up, up to the red little dot, up to the C, the preload, then the full load. And that's reading 50, 59.5. So I was aiming sort of 58, 59, so that's looking pretty good. With 01 tool steel, that's pretty much where I aim, so that's sort of optimum toughness. Now if this was a cutting cutting tool, obviously that would be optimum uh, sort of sharpness as well, so you'd be able to sharpen it easily, but it would hold a really good edge. So these should be perfect. These will work really nicely for my stamps, and what we'll do is we'll take it through to where I've got some blades, and we'll give them a test run, see if they actually work and leave that impression that we're looking for. So we've come through into the grinding room where I've got my granite surface plate which I use for scribing lines. Now all the engineers are out there will probably cringe but I use this for putting my hand stamp marks on. I like to use the granite because it's relatively smooth compared to the surface of my anvil. It's got enough mass so that it doesn't sort of bounce um, but it leaves a relatively smooth finish on the steel. If you basically support your blade or your piece of steel that you're marking on a very rough piece of steel, it will transfer the texture of that surface that you're resting on to the reverse side of your piece of steel. So the granite block works really good for me. Like I say, engineers will be cringing because obviously I'm gonna damage this slightly over the years, but it works really good for me. So I've got my hand stamp. So what I would suggest is Make sure you wear some safety goggles just in case there's a bit of debris or this might chip, you know, you, know, you don't know at this stage. Now, what Chris at Davidson's does is he normally puts just a line on the one side so that if that line is facing you, it's the correct way round. Obviously, when you've got words and letters, it's, it's made mirror image. So obviously, you, you can get it the wrong way up or the wrong way round if you're not careful. So we'll lay that onto the steel making sure that you're supporting it with your fingers. I normally rest the palm of my hand onto the surface plate just to give it a bit of additional support. Now, a big shout out to uh, Mick Spain, who's another knife maker out there. He suggested rather than using my big metal hammer, which can skip off the metal stamp, he suggested using a, a copper mallet. So I've got a really nice, heavy, I think this is a three pound copper and rawhide mallet that I use in the workshop. So I'm gonna use the copper side to strike on top of that, that hand stamp. And we wanna hold it nice and square and then give it a real good clout. Just like so. And obviously that's marked the steel. It hasn't skipped because that copper mallet sort of is kind of sticky and it doesn't slide off the hand stamp. Now if you wanted that deeper, what you'd have to do is very carefully sort of use the stamp and sort of feel when it clicks back into that recess that you've already created and then have another go. Obviously, if you're not careful, you'll end up with like a double a double, double image. So I normally practice, when I've got a new stamp like this, I normally practice with how hard I have to strike it to get the kind of depth of penetration I need. So we'll give it one more bash. I'm gonna hit it a bit harder this time. 
yeah, that's more like it. I've got the depth that I want. I don't want a massively deep etch or a deep mark, but that's going to be plenty. Like just rubbing my dirty fingers over it, you can start to see how that dirt catches in there. And when we heat treat the steel, it will really become sort of obvious, basically. So we're going to use this stamp on some of our Nomad blades. Um, it's a good idea to mark your steel with the type of steel when you made them. I use three or four different types of steel here in the workshop, so if I'm not careful, you could have the you basically get the steel mixed up and you do the wrong heat treat for the wrong steel. So marking your steel is essential, not just for you guys who are buying a product, but for us tool makers and knife makers in the workshop. So yeah, I'm gonna have a little practice on a nomad blade and see how that goes. There's a few other little stamps that I've had made by Davidson's over the years. So I've got my original uh, logo stamp that I ground off just so that I've got my signature and I've also got a smaller version of my little Celtic knot and then Chris has actually made me a few different ones with my steel types as well so I've got RWL34, CPM154 I think I've got another one kicking around somewhere but uh, yeah having all your handy little stamps in the workshop is, is really good so Chris has made quite a few over the years for me and they work great so yeah I'm gonna get a Nomad blade and give it a little practice So that seems to be working really nicely. It's left a really good clear impression of that AEBL steel in these Nomad blades. Now all I've got to do now is make sure that I put my logo on the other side of the blade and I can check for straightness. Now obviously this is being marked in its annealed form so these are still soft at this stage. They've not been heat treated. So if you are using steel stamps, make sure you don't try and stamp into hardened steel. It, it won't work. You need to do it before the actual tool steel itself is heat treated. So yeah, that seems to be working really nicely. And we'll prep a few of those and they should be ready for heat treat this week. So obviously we were showing you testing the hardness of those steel stamps we've made. But we test all the blades to make sure that we're getting the heat treat absolutely spot on. Obviously different steels will have different hardnesses and we will follow a rough recipe, but a lot of it is trial and error, testing blades, taking them out into the woods, seeing what they'll do, whether they're easy to sharpen, whether they're performance steels. Certainly that's what we've done with our parangs and our knives, making sure that you're getting the very best edge quality and that they're gonna stand up to the rigors that you put the, put the tools through basically. So anyway, hope that's helped explain how we do our heat treatment how we check that we're getting the correct results with the Rockwell tester. Hope it's gonna help you knife makers and tool makers out there so that you'll know what, what to do if you're looking out for a Rockwell tester on eBay and things like that. So hope you've enjoyed seeing what we've been working on this Wednesday. Remember to subscribe to the channel and tune in next time to see what else we've been up to. And thanks for watching.